بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعزاء طلاب المرحلة الرابعة في كلية الطب جامعة ميسان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This video lecture about neck surgery In this lecture we will talk about the common disease that affect the neck surgical diseases and the common swellings that present in the neck uh, We will start with the Lidwix angina. Lidwix is the name of the physician that described this disease. So Lidwix angina, it is a life-threatening, rapidly progressive gangrenous cellulitis of the soft tissue involving neck and the floor of the mouth. So keep in your mind that it is a life-threatening condition. It causes diffuse swelling and the brownie oedema of the submandibular region. So the characteristic feature is the brownie oedema in the submandibular region. Usually it starts, uh, usually it starts in the submandibular region. It is common in severely ill and in advanced malignancy, causing it rhythmus. That means spasm of the facial muscle and laryngeal oedema. That's why it is a life threatening. Extension of infection into baropharyngeal space may lead to a dreaded internal jugular vein thrombosis, which also is a life threatening. As the infection is deep to deep fascia in a closed facial plane, it spreads very fast, causing dangerous complications. So, one of the risks is that it's rapid separate. The precipitating factors of Ludwig's angina include caries teeth, oral or other malignancy of oral cavities, uh, submandibular salivary infection or calculi, chemotherapy, chronic diseases like diabetes mellitus, cachexia of any cause. About the clinical features, of Ludwig's angina, there's fever, the patient look toxic, and there's diffuse swelling at the region affected, dysphagia, trismus, also what is characteristic is intraoral oedema, which is common, and the brownie swelling in submandibular region. A brownie is strong oedema. Also, there is a butyrate halitosis. Halitosis, bad smell uh, from the uh, mouth. Butyrate halitosis. Treatment of this condition start with antibiotics and IV fluid and then surgery in form of decompression. This is the Ludwig's angina patient. Patient is affected with Ludwig's angina. You can see here there is Severe swelling, diffuse swelling with a brownie oedema with features of infection, and then it is treated by surgery by this incision. And should, incision should uh, be done, which should be deep incision extended into deep fascia and also cutting both mylohyoid muscle. Complications of this condition. Include laryngeal oedema and respiratory distress. May require that may require tracheostom. Septicemia, extension of infection into baropharyngeal spaces. Another pathology, which is common pathology, is cervical tuberculous lymphadenitis. The causative organism here is mycobacterium tuberculosis, not mycobacterium bulbs. The site usually it is common in neck lymph nodes, common in upper deep cervical lymph nodes, jugulodigastric, more than 50% of the cases in jugulodigastric lymph node. Next common site is posterior triangle, about 22 percent disease can also occur in other lymph nodes in the body like axillary 
lymph nodes, para-aortic lymph nodes, mesenteric lymph nodes, and vinyl lymph nodes. And the disease may associate it with HIV infection and lymphomas. What about the stages of tuberculous lymphadenitis? This diagram and this picture describe the stages of tuberculous lymphadenitis. Stage 1, stage of infection of adenitis. This is the lymph node and this is the deep fascia here. And this is subcutaneous tissue and this is the skin. So stage 1 is stage of infection and lymphadenitis. Stage 2 is stage of periadenitis with matting. التصاق الغدد اللمفاوية. Stage of periadenitis and matting. Stage 3 is the stage of caseating necrosis. Here start the caseating necrosis with cold abscess formation. With cold abscess formation. Stage 4, stage of formation of collar stud abscess. So collar stud abscess. Collar stud abscess. Collar stud, هذا جزء وهذا جزء يسمونه collar stud abscess stage 5 is a stage of formation of sinus the abscess perforate through the skin and then create sinus with discharge yellowish caseating material often fibrosis and calcification can occur with or without the treatment In the gross pathology, there, there will be firm matted lymph nodes with cut sections show yellowish caseating material. We say there is a caseative necrosis. Microscopically, there is epithelioid cells with caseating material that are seen along with Langkans types of giant cells. Langkans uh, type of giant cell, these are epithelioid cells that unite together and uh, it is a giant cell with multiple nuclei. Clinical features there is a swelling in the neck which is firm matted and there may be cold abscess which is soft smooth non-tender fluctuant without involvement of the skin it is not warm there is no over uh, features of inflammation, so it's called cold abscess. As a result of increased pressure, cold abscess rupture out of the deep fascia to form cholesterol abscess, which is adherent to the overlying skin. Once cholesterol abscess bears open, discharging sinus is formed. <coughs> it also may be studied with a tumor. Associated pulmonary TB should also be looked for, and also cervical spine is examined for tuberculosis. Once you find TB in any site, you have to think about the TB in the common sites. And the differential diagnosis, you can see here, the, uh, it is tuberculous lymphadenitis, and it is just about to rupture just about to rupture to form a sinus the differential diagnosis of cervical lymphadenitis first non-specific lymphadenitis lymphadenitis due to any other cause no, uh, not TB lymphomas chronic lymphatic leukemia secondaries in the neck brachial cyst may mimic cold abscess lymph Lymphatic cyst mimics also called abscess. HIV with lymph node involvement also in differential diagnosis of cervical uh, tuberculous lymphadenitis. Discharging sinus also in the differential uh, discharging sinus due to actinomycosis also in the differential diagnosis of cervical tuberculous lymphadenitis. You can see in this patient there is 
multiple cervical lymphedema neuropathy, but this is due to lymphoma. And this is cervical lymphedema neuropathy here, but due to malignant secondaries. The required investigation, like any investigation for TB, hematocrit and ESR, the, usually there is raised high ESR, fine needle aspiration cytology of lymph node and smear for acid fast muscle life from the tonsil and culture. Also smear from the discharging sinus and culture. HIV test, ELISA and Western blood, because as we said, it may be associated with HIV and in differential diagnosis of HIV. Open biopsy when fine needle biopsy uh, when fine needle aspiration cytology is inconclusive. Chest X-ray to exclude pulmonary TB and the most recent investigation is BSR is very useful. Treatment of cervical tuberculosis and fibrinitis. Antituberculosis drug right, usually for six to nine months. Aspiration if there is cholestatic abscess or there is cold abscess. Incision and drainage if there is no resolution on aspiration. Surgical removal sometimes indicated and the indication for surgical removal of tubercular lymph node when there is no local response to drugs or when sinus persist. Usually, excision of the sinus tract is required in tuberculous lymphadenitis associated with sinus. Now, I will talk about the one of complication of tuberculous cervical lymphadenitis is called abscess. Deep to deep fascia. So, it is deep to deep fascia. Once it bears for a deep fascia, it becomes cholesterol abscess. No evidence of signs of inflammation, so that's why we call it cold abscess. Not warm, not tender, like any other classical in, uh, inflammation. It is a smooth, soft, fluctuant, non transitive It is not adherent to skin and no redness. Contains cheesy caseating material. It may form color stud abscess and then sinus. This is a patient with color stud abscess. You can see here this swelling is color stud abscess. No feature of inflammation, no features of inflammation. And this is a sinus and an earlier biopsy scar. This is aspirated cold abscess. You can see here, this is aspirated cold abscess, sent for culture and sensitive and direct examination. The required investigation, fine needle aspiration cytology, uh, uh, and uh, also uh, investigation for acid fast bacilli uh, in the abscess. Uh, also, uh, the abscess should be sent for culture assays. Differential diagnosis from brain cyst and from lymphatic cyst. A treatment by antituberculous drug. And what we call zigzag aspiration. We should not aspirate directly, push the needle direct into the abscess cavity because it will induce or will complicated by uh, sinus formation. It should make the needle its way to the abscess cavity in zigzag way. And the drainage uh, using non-dependent incision. Usually when we drain any abscess, it is referable to put your incision in the dependent part. Dependent يعني أكثر شيء تأثر بالجاذبية الأرضية مثل ما يقول. أقرب شيء للجاذبية الأرضية حتى يصير الدرينج بتر. هنا we avoid drainage independent because if we uh, drain independent, this will encourage the formation of sinus. So we drain in uh, cold abscess in non-dependent area. Now I will talk about one of also 
common pathology that affect the, the neck is branchial cyst and fistula. Before we start to talk about this, we will start about the embryology. Embryology in the neck. In embryo, the neck starts to develop between the head and the developing heart. And during this development, there will be five ridges develop on each side of the neck called the branchial arches. يعني الرجز اللي هي مثل ما نقول حافة أو علوة خن وصفها هاي الرجز هاي الرجز بهالطريقة هاي five ridges واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة من كل جهة five ridges هاي يسمونها the branchial arches the first arch First arch اللي هو هنا أنا هذا First arch form mandible and ear على first arch من عنده راح يطلع لنا المandible والear Second arch forms the hyoid bone هذا second arch forms the hyoid bone Third arch form the neck over the thyroid region Third arch هذا هو اللي راح ي from it derive the structure in the neck over the thyroid region. During embryological development, the second arch grows rapidly covering the third and fourth arch, then it fuses with the fifth arch. شوفون هنا second arch هذا second arch هذا اللي داشر عليه السهم يصير بي growth و cover the third and fourth arch و fuse with the fifth arch here the space هاي اللي تصير بيناتهم يسمونه cervical sinus cervical sinus هاي السبيس اللي هي soon will disappear normally soon will disappear اذا صار persistent هاي ما صار بيه disappear هاي cervical sinus راح يصير عندنا البرينكل سيست البرينكل سيست اذا صار انكمبليت فيوجن مثل ما يصير هنا عندنا بين السكند والفيفث انكمبليت راح يعطينا برينكل فيستون انكمبليت فيوجن راح يعطينا برينكل فيستون اذا كمبليت فيوجن بس وقت هاي السبيس ما اختفى يعطينا برينكل سيست So cervical branchial cyst is persistent cervical sinus, while branchial fistula if the second arch does not completely fuse with the fifth arch. Let us start with the branchial cyst. The clinical features, our clinical picture of branchial cyst, usually the edge affected, as far as it is congenital. It usually presented at childhood or later at age of 20 years. Usually presented at age of childhood or at age of 20 years, around the 20 years. The site usually is characteristic. Site multi. شوفون هنا نه. هذا site. Site هو characteristic. يكون بالأبر بارت of side of neck below the angle of mandible شوفونا typical هاي الأنجل مال mandible هاي الأبر بارت of the neck just below the angle of the mandible deep to anterior border of upper third of sternocleidomastoid هاي الsternocleidomastoid muscle شوفون من مالتها الsternocleidomastoid وهنا السيست يكون deep in head not superficial Deep to the upper third, the anterior border, not posterior, the anterior can be deep. So here, now, let's see the patient with the bilateral branchial cyst. The character of this cyst, usually it is moderate in size, about five centimeter in diameter. Usually, this size. It is globular, as you can see. Smooth, well defined, tense, cystic, and oblique. On contracting the sternocleidomastoid, the mass bulge out. 
the pathology of this cyst. It is lined by squamous epithelium and surrounded by lymphoid, by excessive lymphoid tissues that explain its frequent inflammation. It contains mucus rich in cholesterol crystals. يعني إذا دخلت نيدل وسحبت من عند ال الكونتنت مالته راح ألقى ميوكس ماتيريال وبيها فد مثل ما نقول يلو شجرانيوز اللي هي تكون كوليسترول كريستالز. التريتمنت of this condition is complete excision through transverse incision. شوفوا هنا على برينكل سيست. أحيانا rarely يعني it is trans illuminate. occasionally it is trans illuminate. usually it is not trans -illuminate. Because it contains uh, not a clear fluid, it's uh, opaque fluid. So, complete excision through transverse incision. Here, I will do my incision, should be about two finger breadth below the angle of the mandible, and I will open it here transverse. Now I will talk about branchial fistula. Branchial fistula usually congenital, but there is a cases of acquired branchial fistula. Congenital branchial fistula, the clinical picture, the age usually present at birth. This fistula usually present at birth. Here the fistula, and this fistula, and this fistula, branchial fistula. So the age usually present at birth. At birth, side. Look to the side. It is the external opening of this fistula lies deep to lower third of sternocleidomastoid. We have said the branchial cyst deep to the upper third of sternocleidomastoid. The fistula opening, my lad, is deep to the lower third of the high neck. Here, the high lower third of the neck. هنا على يد الاسترنوم مالتنا فديب تو لور ثيرد اوف ستيرنوكليدوماستويد مصل السايد مالتها نير اتس انتيرير بوردر هاي فيستولا هاي الاكسترنال اوبننج مالتها هاي هنا تشوف هنا الاكسترنال اوبننج مالتها التراكت مالتها باس بتوين اكسترنال كاروتيد اند انترنال كاروتيد تو اند بلا تو اند هايلي In lateral wall of the pharynx, behind tonsil. You can see it's higher than that. You reach the tonsil. The tract is there. We end it usually blind or rarely opened into tonsil. The character of this fistula external opening is present as a pinpoint opening. But but it's very small. I mean, you can see it's not even a pinpoint opening. So we need to discharge it. شوفون هنا انفكتد هنا انا ميوكاس ديسشارج نوت ايضا الفيستولا از فيلت از اتريت باسنج اب اند ديبلي ثرو ذا انتيرير بارت اوف ذا ستيرنوماستوي يعني اذا تحسسنا بهاي المنطقه باي يور فينجرز يو ويل فيل لايك اتريت باسنج اب ويل الديسشارج ميوكاس or pus if in fact until here we see a pus and here we see mucus the fistula may be confused with the tuberculous sinus one of the differential diagnosis is the tuberculous sinus the pathology the tract is lined by sequimus epithelium extend up to the side wall of the nasopharynx it's a monophosa of rosin molar It is surrounded by lymphoid tissue, which explains its frequent inflammation. Contain much, uh, contain mucus rich in cholesterol crystal. The treatment of this condition is complete excision. Show here the opening, even of branchial fistula. Back in adult life, here the treatment complete excision of whole tract. شوفون هذا التراكت من الاكسترنال اوبننج مالته 
through multiple transverse incision اول incision نسوي around its opening ونسوي dissection around the tract نسوي incision اخر حتى نقدر نصعد به اللي فوق مش قد نقدر نوصل بال dissection اللي هنا complete excision of the hull through multiple transverse neck incision small one around the external opening and the other at higher level وبعدين نسوي incision الى ان نسوي له complete excision اللي acquired the brinkle fistula احنا قلنا mostly it is congenital اكو acquired due to rupture of inflamed brinkles the brinkles is infection it may get ruptured due to infection or due to also incomplete removal of the cyst يعني قسم اللي يسوي العملية ما يشيل السيست كله يخلي جزء من عنده فينتهي ايضا برينكال فيست الكلينيكال بيكتشر اند باثولوجي اس كونجنتال تايب والتريتمنت اس كونجنتال تايب Now I will talk another about another disorder that affect the neck, which is called we we called it congenital torticollis. Congenital torticollis. The etiology at birth. At birth, there is an interruption of blood supply to one part of the sternocleidomastoid. Keep in your mind that sternos sternocleidomastoid muscle. Develop through union of three somites. Each with its blood supply. Each one from it has its blood supply. Sometimes at birth, you see interruption of blood supply to central portion. Okay, causing muscle infarction. Then, see here. In this picture, you see it has a interruption of blood supply of central. يصير هنا انفاركشن الانفاركتد بورشن بيكمز سوالنج يصير هنا سوالنج عندي دائما تجي في الام جايبه طفلها تقول لك احس هنا ورمه ضربت ذا انفاركتد بورشن بيكمز سوالنج هيز ذا نيم ستيرنوكليدو ماستويد تيومر او ستيرنو ماستويد تيومر سموه ستيرنوكليدو ماستويد تيومر افتر ا وايل The infected portion is replaced by fibrous tissue that contract causing congenital torticollis. بعدين هذا ال شو يكون هذا infected portion يصير بي fibrosis يتبدل fibrous tissue. فا يصير contraction له للمصل هذا. فتسبب ال deformity هذا بالنك causing congenital هاي بشكل يصير يجي كطفل. لأن المصل مال تحت كونتراكتد كاظة مثل ما نقول بالعامية. الكلينيكال بيكتشر ات بيرث ذير ويل بي ا سوالينج ويتش از فيرم ان كونسيستنسي اوف ذا ميدل بورشن اوف ذا ستيرنو ماستويد مصل. ليتر وين تورتيد كولس ديفلوبس ذا هيد ويل بي تلتد تو ذا سايد اوف ذا ليجن. شوف الهيد يصير بي تلت تو ذا سايد اوف ذا ليجن. وذ ذا فيس تكون تو اذر سايد. باو هنا فيس تو كونت تو اذرز فيشل اسيمتري وليتر اوكير وذ فلاتنج اوف ذا سايد اوف ذا فيس اوف ذا سايد اوف ذا ليجن بعدين بسبب الكونتراكشن هنا هنا يصير فلاتنج بهاي الجهه يصير هالجزء مال الوجه ما يشبه هالجزء يصير فيشل اسيمتري This condition should be differentiated from رينيك اكو كونديشن يسمونه رينيك دبليو ار واي هذا الرينيك هو كونديشن تمبرري كونديشن يصير بي فايبروسايتس ديو تو فايرال انفكشن عادة بالتونسوت وينزل على النيك يسبب فايبروسايتس كوزنج سبازم اوف ستيرنو ماستويد مصر ذيس تمبرري ديسوردر يوزوال لاستنج فور داي اور تو يوم يومين عند ريسبون تو انتي انفلاماتري دراج تعطي اني اوف ذا انتي انفلاماتري دراجز مفيناميك اسيد مثلا تنطي تشوف البيشنت امبروف تريتمنت سو ذا تريتمنت از ان ايرلي كيسز ايرلي افتر بير اف يو دايجنوز ذيس ايرلي افتر بير باي ذا تريتمنت از باي فيزيوثيرابي اند ان فيزيوثيرابي ات از ان اتمت تو بريفنت ذا ديفلوبمنت اوف ديفورميتي باي ستريتشنج ذا نيك يعني إذا جاني طفل 
وعنده هنا هاي السوالينك وشخصت على انه سترنو ماستويد تيومر اللي راح يسبب لي بالمستقبل تورتيكولس فاسوي له فيزيوثيرابي باي كونتراكشن اوف ذا نيك باي ستريتشنج ذا نيك تو اذر سايد يعني حاول انه تسحب النيك الى هذا السايد فتوصل مدر انه قلها تذكري كل ما ترضعينه مثلا فد عشر مرات اطب جراسة على كتفه هنا جنتلي اطب جراسة على كتفه حتى ما يصير هالكونتراكشن عشر مرات بقى هنا اوكي هذا يسمونه فيزيوثيرابي باي ستريتشنج ذا نيك تو اذر سايد اف ذا ديفورمتي از استابلش يعني جان المريض بهالحاله استابلش ديفورمتي Treatment is by division of sternomastoid at its lower hair. Lower part should be done. يعني أقطع sternomastoid muscle. هنا أنا أقطع حب هذا المكان هذا lower hair ده. حتى أسوي release للنك. Now I will talk about another pathology which is pharyngeal diverticulum. It is also called Zinker's diverticulum, also called pharyngeoesophageal diverticulum. It is herniation of pharyngeal mucosa through a weak area in the posterior pharyngeal So there is a herniation of pharyngeal mucosa from a weak area in the posterior pharyngeal The etiology is the spasm of a cricopharyngeus muscle. This muscle, someone has cricopharyngeus muscle. When it causes spasm, The pressure above it will increase. So spasm of cricopharyngeal muscle. Fail to relax during swallowing. Increase the pressure in the pharynx. Cause herniation of the mucosa, mucous membrane posteriorly. So food enter the diverticulum. This muscle gets spasm. And in the swallowing, the food cannot pass. And there will be by spasm of the pharynx increase the pressure and cause herniation of this mucosa, and the food will enter into this diverticulum. The clinical picture typically the patient is old age, and the symptoms are progressive dysphagia with regurgitation of non digested food after meals. Dysphagia, طبعا, progressive it will زيد مع الوقت. With regurgitation of non-digested food after meal, signs there will be swelling characterized by by being it's soft, soft swelling, compressible at posterior triangle. Look here, it is at posterior triangle of the neck, and it is dull or resonant. طبعا إذا بي كان ما there is no food only air. It is Resonant. If there is food or fluid, it is dull. And there is gargling sound can be elicited if the patient swallows several globes of air. Complications. It may cause aspiration pneumonia. It may cause diverticulitis. He said, "Aid an inflammation of this diverticulum, diverticulitis." And there is risk of cancer. 0.3 percent low cancer. Investigation of choice is barium swallow. Can diagnose the diverticulum here. You can see the diverticulum. It is the investigation of choice, the best investigation. About the endoscopy should not be done because high risk of perforation. Because it is just a mucosa. If you pass the endoscope here, it may perforate, and it is life-threatening risk condition. About the treatment. According to the size of diverticulum, if there is a small size, just repeated dilatation of a cricopharyngeus muscle, just pass a dilator through the pharynx into the esophagus to dilate the cricopharyngeus muscle. If it is small, if it is moderate in size, diverticulopex. That means with the by invagination and dilatation. That means I push this diverticulum inside. And I blanket the exterior layer. 
If it is learned by diverticulum, I cut this and suture. Another pathology that affect the neck is laryngocele. It is herniation of the mucous membrane through a weak point in the thyrohyoid membrane. Also, this is swelling in the neck. It is a herniation through the thyrohyoid membrane. Herniation of the mucous membrane through a weak point in the thyroid. Clinical picture, there is cystic swelling in the neck. Usually occurs in the musician and those uh, that use uh, like plower, glass plower also. Occur in musician and those that uh, usually raise the pressure inside their larynx. The, 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 their works uh, demand uh, to raise the pressure inside their larynx. Musician, uh, glass blowers. Also, the swelling is resonant and compressible because it contains air and compressible. The treatment of this condition, factor of the training should be corrected. يعني إذا musician نقول يعني شوف مثل ما نقول another job and excision. شوفون هنا نا لانغوسي وبال X-ray after blowing شوفون there is air. Inside the laryngosy. Another pathology in the leg is what we call cystic hygroma. Another name cavernous cavernous lymphangioma. It is a sac formed from sequestrated part of jugular lymph sac of fetus. So it is a sequestrated lymphatic sac. Sequestrated lymphatic sac. The pathology it consists of multiple intercommunicating cystic lymph spaces. It is lined by endothelium. It contains lymph. And the clinical picture, usually the age of presentation, since birth or shortly after. يعني the patient after birth, أمو عند الماس. شوفون هاي الماس مال cystic hygroma. Or بعد البيرث بأشهر تبين. Sites, sites usually common in at lower part of side of neck. Superficial to sternomastoid and extend to posterior triangle. شوف هنا أنا هذا ال child اللي عنده cystic hygroma. The common at lower part of side of the neck superficial. هنا يكون superficial هذا البعض طبعا. قلنا تذكرون البرينكال سيست والبرينكال فيستولا ديب للستيرنوماستويد هنا سوبرفيشال عندك ستين تو بوستيرير ترينكال ذا نيكست كومن سايت از اكزيلا شوفون مثلا هنا انا الون اور وذ ذا نيك ذا نيكست كومن تشيك ليب اللي نسميه ماكرو تشيلي اند تانك اللي نسميه ماكرو جلوسيا الكاركتر اوف ذيس سوالينج يكون ارجولار شوفون هنا انا Irregular shape, large in size, ill-defined edge, translucent. Are the leaks? One of the differential diagnoses. Mal brilliantly translucent. يعني من سوي لترانسليومنيشن تيس يكون brilliant وهاج مثل global مشتعل. فيكون brilliantly translucent. Lacks. Because it contains fluid, cystic, compressible, but not pulsating mass. Treatment is excision as early as possible. So we like excision. Or another treatment injection of boiling water. Or sclerosing material. Every week we do injection to induce fibrosis. We know in lymphatic cell. حتى نسوي فايبروسيس فيصير شرينكج بالماس. Or if infected give antibiotic. وإذا صار باس بيها طبعا درانج. Another pathology that occur in the neck is carotid body tumor. What is carotid body tumor? It is also called mutated tumor. 
لان هسه احنا راح نشوف انه بالاكزامينيشن يشبه البوتيتا هاي العاديه Also it is called chemodictin. Also another name non-chromaffin baraganglion. It arises from the carotid body. هذا الكاروتيد بدي يصير هنا في المكان بين ال bifurcation of the carotid. It arises from the carotid body which is located at the bifurcation of common carotid artery. Carotid body is derived from the neural crest. which is essential for adaptation and fluctuation in this O2 and CO2 and BH. We know that the carotid body here is going to be from the neural crest. And the fact is that we have adaptation to the changes that are going to be in CO2, BO2, BH. So we have to change the body. We have to change the body. We have to change the body. And this is the place. Carotid body tumor can be sporadic in 75% of cases. يعني it is one case in the family or familial in 20%. طبعاً اكو 5% يكون hyperplastic. The tumor is situated in the adventitia of the artery. The external layer of the artery نسميها الadventitia فهو هنا مكان بالexternal layer. They are benign or locally malignant in 10%. But in 20% of cases, spread to the lymph node, to regional lymph node, and even to the lung. Tumor does not secrete into the hilae. Tumor does not secrete, although it is from the neural crest. Tumor does not secrete epinephrine or any endocrine substances. The clinical picture of this condition, its incidence is in 0.5% of population. Usually unilateral, more common in middle age, common in female. It is firm like potato, firm inconsistency, swelling which is firm inconsistency in the carotid region <coughs> of the neck. It is a smooth, firm, pulsatile, and moves only side to side but not in vertical direction. This is called Fontaine sign. If it is moved from side to side, but not in the vertical, it's called Vontian sign. The thrill may be felt, and the brewing may be heard. Features also of a transient atta ischemic attacks due to compression over the carotid uh, may occur. Called carotid body syncope. يعني إذا ضغطنا على هاي الماس أحيانا البيشنت ينتيب syncope. يعني يصير ضغط على الكاروت. The required investigations, Doppler angiogram, which show widening of aortic bifurcation of carotid bifurcation. It is characteristic sign. CT and MRI and MRI angiography, MIBG scan. But remember, no fine needle aspiration because it is vessels. Because you will end with severe bleeding. No true cut biopsy, no partial excision. Treatment, if it is a small excision, local excision, it is easy. If it is large, as commonly observed, need complete excision. And here we have to do uh, a vascular graft uh, to replace the excised vessel. Now we will talk about differential diagnosis of AMAS in the neck. Diagnosis of AMAS in the neck depends on the age of the patient. And you remember from the many lesions we have already studied that some lesions are common in certain age group. For example, pharyngocele common in old age, cystic hygroma common in newborn, uh, brachial cysts also common in the young age group. And like that. Also, clinical course of the mass. It is progressive or not, or static, stationary, or on and off, waxing and waning. Sight is important in differential diagnosis, and you will take the differential diagnosis according to the sight. The next next part of the lecture. Consistency, whether cystic or solid, also very important. Keep in your mind that most common swelling in the neck 
lymph nodes, next thyroid gland, after that salivary gland. There is what we call rule of 80s in adult next one. Rule of 80s. 80% 80 of non-thyroid masses in adult are neoplastic. And 80% of neoplastic masses are malignant. You see how much it is the malignancy. And 80% of malignant masses, 80% of malignant masses are metastatic. And 80% of malignancies in adult are squamous cell carcinoma. And 80% of metastases are from primaries above clavicle. And 80% of parotid masses are benign. And 80% of minor salivary masses are malignant. This is called rule of 80. And diagnosis of neck mass depends on clinical presentation. Fine needle. Aspiration cytology, whether it is squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma, chest x ray, CT and MRI for the face and neck, uh, office nasopharyngeal laryngoscopy and ban endoscopy, OGD, esophagogastrodidinoscopy, bronchoscopy, biopsies from nasopharynx, from the base of the tongue. These are important investigations. Differential diagnosis according to the site, also. For example, differential diagnosis swelling at midline, we have solid swelling and cystic swelling. Solid swelling, submental lymph nodes, pretracheal and uh, the laryngeal lymph node, nodule of isthmus of thyroid gland, and cystic swelling, like cold abscess, thyroglossal cyst, dermoid cyst, sublingual or suprasternal dermoid. Subhyoid bursitis, and this subhyoid bursitis, it is rare, tender over swelling, which moves up and down with the deglutition and protrusion of the tank. And laryngocele, also type of cystic swelling, and cyst adenoma of thyroid isthmus. While differential diagnosis of swelling at lateral triangle of the neck, also divided into digastric triangle, carotid triangle, and posterior triangle. In the digastric triangle, we have a large submandibular lymph node and a large submandibular salivary gland, and the differential diagnosis between submandibular lymph node and submandibular salivary gland uh, that the submandibular lymph nodes are multiple and can be ruled over the edge of mandible, unlike submandibular gland, which is single and cannot be ruled over the Sub, uh, over the mandibular uh, edge. Also swelling in the carotid triangle and it could be large upper uh, deep cervical lymph node or a large upper part of lateral loop of goiter or carotid body tumor, potato tumor, chemodectoma and could be cystic swelling could be cystic swelling in the carotid triangle, and cystic swelling could be cold abscess, wrinkle cyst, and urine of carotid after. And the swelling of the posterior triangle, solid swelling, either cervical rib or neurofibroma arising from branchial plexus, or a large lymph node or sternomastoid tumor. While cystic swelling, cold abscess, pharyngeal valve, cystic hygroma, nematocele. And nematocele, it is <coughs> due to an increase in thoracic pressure. For example, example herniation of a pleura through species fascia that overlie the pleura. It occurs with emphysematous patient. It is cystic resonant, compressible, and shows expansive impulse on curve. In addition to what we already mentioned about the different type of swelling. There are different swelling from the skin and subcutaneous tissue, like in every triangle, should keep this in your mind, like lipomas, basal cysts, all these could be, and other type of swelling could occur here in these triangles. Thank you very much for your listening.